Design criteria must be considered when implementing a protection scheme in a microgrid. The most important parameters are usually grouped under the so-called 3S protection design criteria, where the term 3S stands for sensitivity, selectivity, and speed. In this video, we will go through all these three criteria, and we will see how this can be implemented and how do they affect the system. Additionally, we will see which other parameters need to be taken into account in order to plan the protection scheme in a successful way. The first criterion is sensitivity. This aspect is fundamental because the protection scheme needs to be designed in order to be able to identify abnormal conditions that exceed a pre-specified threshold. For example, let's take a look at two different conditions. On the left-hand side, the system is affected by a fault. We define this situation as abnormal condition. On the right-hand side, instead, the system is affected by a load connection. This is an example of a normal condition in the system. When a fault occurs on the figure on the left, the generators labeled EG in the drawing will start injecting more current in order to clear the fault. Note that also in case of load connection, the level of current increases in all distribution lines, so the protection scheme shall be fine-tuned in such a way that the overcurrent relays only operate during the fault conditions. Since we don't want the circuit breaker to indicate it with a CB in the drawing to react when the system is in normal conditions, we need to make sure that the protection devices implemented in the network will respond only when a predetermined level of fault currents is reached. Two sensitive circuit breakers might trip unexpectedly, causing unnecessary power interruption instead. The second criterion is selectivity. Once our protection devices are correctly tuned, we want the protection scheme to only isolate the faulted part of the grid. This must be ensured in order to minimize the possible negative impacts of the fault of, on the rest of the grid. In this example, a fault occurs in the lower part of the system. When the short circuit currents injected by, by the generators in the system start flowing, a correct operation would lead to the disconnection of circuit breaker number three. If this happens, then the selectivity criterion is met, because only a minimal section of the power system is affected by default. However, if circuit breaker three is not properly operated, then circuit breaker two shall be disconnected. When the disconnection of circuit breaker two takes place, also generator number two is disconnected. Selectivity is an important design criterion because if, for example, both circuit breaker two and three fail, then the circuit breaker at the head of the grid will disconnect. That would lead to the worst possible situation, as the whole grid, including the rest of the feeders, would be disconnected during default. Selectivity is directly connected to the so-called blinding problem of protection. Let's move back to the circuit so far analyzed. During default, if generator 2 participates in the fault current injecting additional current during the fault, then the circuit breaker 2 will sense lower levels of fault current, and as a result, it might react with a delay in time. This delay in time can compromise the effectivity of the protection scheme, which might not be able to clear the fault leading to system failure. As we will see in the third criterion, the response time of the protection devices is of fundamental importance. The third design criterion is speed. Protective relays should respond fast enough in order to avoid damage to equipment and give stability. You can see here the generic time current tripping curve of an overcurrent relay. The red line indicates the rated current of the relay. The tripping curve gives an indication of the time reaction of the device to certain current levels detected. It is possible to divide the operating conditions of the relay in three areas. The first area is covered during overload conditions and it is called inverse time part, indicated by the letter L. During overload conditions, the current might reach up to two times the rated value. Network elements, such as transformers and cables, are not able to sustain such large currents for a long period of time because of their thermal limits. In this case, the overcurrent relay can disconnect within several seconds or minutes which is actually a relatively long time in terms of protection. The second area, labeled S, regards short circuits and it is called constant time part. When the faults occur, the 
current level will dramatically increase. In such cases, the relay is expected to disconnect in a very short time, typically between 50 and 300 milliseconds. The last region of the tripping curve is the instantaneous part and regards the essentially in instantaneous trips at very high current levels. This very fast time reaction is reached generally during lightnings. In order to ensure correct tripping performance, the S part of the curve can be shifted downwards. This regulation increases the speed of the relay and its effectiveness when the period short circuit related falls. Next to the three S design criteria, there are other types of factors that are also important in protection scheme. We will mention here other four criteria. Dependability is relevant because we expect the protection system to operate correctly while experiencing a fault. Security is another important aspect, as we design the system in order to re reject all powered system events and transients that are not faults. To enhance reliability, redundancy needs to be taken into account. Connecting more protection devices in a redundant way may help prevent failures from unexpected mal malfunctioning in circuit breakers, relays, and fuses. The last aspect we take into account is cost. Indeed, indeed it is fundamental to design the protection layer minimizing cost, but without compromising operation. In summary, in this video we had an insight of the three most important design criteria in protection. Sensitivity refers to the ability of the circuit breakers in the system to detect an abnormal increase in current, since when a fault occurs, the connected generators will start injecting more current. As we mentioned, too low or too high sensitivity of the device might lead to incorrect trip of the devices. The second criterion is selectivity. As we saw that circuit breaker, the trips should be the closest to the fault in order not to affect the other parts of the network. We covered the speed criterion. The reaction time of the protection devices is fundamental to properly respond to faults in the system. We have seen the reaction time depends on the time current tripping characteristic of the relay. Some overcurrents might require lower reaction speed, while higher currents, given for example by lightning, require immediate response. Finally, we discussed that dependability, security, redundancy, and cost are also important criteria when designing and implementing a protection scheme.